Hi everyone, today I'll be focusing on RRSPs, the Registered Retirement Savings Plan. I did a video on this topic almost two years ago, but the views have died down completely. The YouTube algorithm likes new videos, so I'm rehashing a few older topics. Also, I keep getting the same questions on RRSPs and TFSAs over and over again, so hopefully this helps the new viewers out a little. I haven't said this in a long time, but please, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. My subscriber growth has been abysmal and I'm hoping maybe if I say it more, just subscribe to the channel that I'll get a few more subs. First up, what is it? An RSP is a financial account for retirement savings, although it can be used for other reasons such as home buyer's plan and the lifelong learning plan, which I recommend taking advantage of if you need it. You can open an account with any financial institution, but I recommend using Wealthsimple or Questrade. Personally, I have an RSP with Wealthsimple and I use their robo-advisors to trade for me. I have a few videos where I review their returns in my RSP account every three months if you're interested. You can open as many RSP accounts as you want with as many brokerages. You can open one or you can open 20. The rule is as long as you stay under your personal limit. I personally have two RSP accounts with Wealthsimple. Who can open an RSP? Technically, there's no age limit. Any Canadian resident with employment income who has filed their returns can open, has, who has filed their tax returns can open an account. You can contribute until the age of 71, where any RSP you have will either be taken directly into income or converted into a RIF, Registered Retirement Income Fund, where you'll be forced to start withdrawing and taking the income personally. How much can I deposit? This one's a little more difficult as it varies from person to person. It's not like a TFSA where every Canadian gets the same amount increasing every year. Your personal limit is 18% of your earned income plus any unused room from the previous year. However, the CRA places a maximum contributable amount, which is, I believe, $27,830 for 2021. This annual cap increases by inflation every year, so don't believe this number for 2022. It will be adjusted maybe to 28,000, maybe to 29,000 and so on. Let's go through a quick example. Let's say this is your first job and you started earning $60,000 a year. This would give you a contribution move of $10,800, which is 18% of $60,000. If you choose not to contribute, maybe because you forgot, maybe because you don't have the funds, that's fine. That contribution room gets carried forward indefinitely. The next year, you'll have another $10,800. And the third year, you have another $10,800. This will give you a total contribution limit of $32,400. If you happen to have that money, you can deposit that entire $32,400 into your RSP and get the deduction for that year. The calculation for the RSP is the lesser of two items. It's the lesser of 18% of your earned income or the annual limit, which is $27,830. So if you earned $200,000 this year, your contribution room would not be $36,000. Because the CRA places a limit, your contribution room would have to be the lesser of, which is the annual limit, $27,830. If you want to know your current contribution room, if you filed your taxes before, you should have received an NOA, a notice of assessment. The CRA puts your individual contribution room on every notice of assessment. So hopefully you have those on file. You can go back and check what your limit is. How much can I withdraw? The answer is easy. You can draw the entire amount whenever you want. It's yours. However, there will be tax penalties. Usually the brokerage should withhold the tax and remit it for you. If you have an example, 100,000 in your RSP, if you withdraw it, you won't get that 100,000. You might get 70,000 with the brokerage, your bank, sending that 30,000 to the CRA on your behalf. I don't recommend taking out from your RSP at any time unless you're retiring or you need it for the home buyer's plan. What are the benefits of opening and investing in an RSP? The obvious one is savings, then there's tax deduction, and the big one is tax deferral. Please note that this does not mean tax avoidance. You're not skipping paying tax, you're merely saving on paying the tax until a later date. Tax deferral, your income earned in the RSP is tax-free until you withdraw later in the future where you will be taxed on it. Any amount contributed to an RSP will be tax deductible in the year. But what does this mean? If you're earning $60,000 in Ontario and you contribute $10,000, this will reduce your tax payable by approximately $3,000. This effectively reduces your income earned for the year. So instead of paying tax on $60,000, you're indirectly paying tax on $50,000. 
Keep in mind, you're only deferring the tax, you're not really saving it. When you eventually pull that money out again, you'll have to pay that $3,000 back. Remember, any unused contribution room is carried forward forever. Should you open one? The short answer is yes. The long answer is it varies. It depends on your current financial situation and your current tax bracket. If you're a high income earner, let's say you make more than $90,000, your deduction will be much greater than if your income was thirty dollars to $40,000 where your tax bracket is a lot lower. So obviously, the more you make, the more the benefit will be in your RSP when you contribute. I personally would avoid making contributions if you make under $90,000. I would save that room until you're a higher income earner and then you can make those contributions and get a bigger deduction. The second item to consider on if you should contribute to your RSP is your current financial situation. Would you need the funds in a year or two? Obviously, when you contribute, you get a tax deduction. When you withdraw, you get a tax penalty. So there almost is no benefit. If you need the funds within one or two years, I don't think you can make enough in your RSP to justify the deduction and then paying the tax on it later. If you invest in the stock market and you need the money in a year, if something happens and it tanks, you withdraw, not only will you be paying a tax penalty on withdrawing the RSP, you also would have lost money in your investment. So I would avoid, avoid investing or contributing to an RSP if you need the funds within a short time frame. Lastly, is there anything else I should know about the RSP? I am going to name a few items. You can over contribute by $2,000 over your entire lifetime. So the contribution room, it's not as stringent as the TFSA where you can't even over contribute by $1. The CRA will give you a $2,000 leeway so you can make a small mistake, but try not to over contribute by too much. Anything more than $2,000 will be penalized. Also, if you're a first time home buyer, there is something called the home buyer's plan where you're allowed to take out $35,000 from your RSP tax free in order to buy your first home. However, over the next 15 years, you have to pay that $35,000 back. There are no free rides. If you do not pay back the RSP in equal installments over 15 years, 1 15th will be taken into income and you'll be forced to pay tax on it. Last item. If you contribute to your RSP, you don't have to take the deduction in that year. But what does this mean? Why would someone do that? If you get a $10,000 bonus this year, you put it into your RSP, but you know over the next two years, you'll be getting a big raise. You'll be making a lot more. Your tax bracket will be a lot higher. You can contribute to your RSP, but you don't have to claim the deduction on your tax return. You can claim it in a later year where your tax bracket is higher, making the benefits higher for those contributions. I hope that wasn't too confusing, but if you just listen to it one or two times, it does make sense. It is something you can do. You, you have the option of contributing to your RSP, but you have the option of not taking the deduction in that year. You can take it in a later year. That's it for this video. Hopefully it was a short one. I'll be rehashing these TFSA RSP videos maybe every year, every two years, so the new viewers don't have to go back to my first video to rewatch them. I know it can be overwhelming. I do have over 150 videos at this point, so it can be a lot of topics to cover. Sometimes I do run out of things to say, so I will be rehashing older topics. Just bear with me. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have any questions and tune in to the next one.